I wonder what it would have been like to be in Jesus's core team of three disciples. We know he had 12 disciples, but there was a small core of three, Peter, James and John. Um, incredible blessing for sure, but a massive steep learning curve and the adventure of a lifetime. Today, we're going to be learning from the life of the Apostle James. Hi everyone, I'm pleased to be able to continue our journey exploring what does it mean to become a real follower of Jesus. In this series we're looking into the lives of the people that knew Jesus best, his 12 disciples. These were very ordinary people in many ways who became extraordinary leaders that impacted the world for good. Last week we looked at Peter's life, Peter that impulsive fisherman who became the rock upon which Christ built his church. Through Peter's life, we learn that our past mistakes don't have to define us, but it's more about our willingness to be shaped by him for great things. Now today we're turning our attention to the disciple James. Um, he's one of the most well-known disciples whose life story has so much to teach us. It's worth mentioning that there were several Jameses in the New Testament. There's James, son of Alphaeus, another disciple, and then there was James, the brother of Jesus, who wasn't in the team of 12, but he's thought to have authored the book of James and was a significant leader in the early Christian church in Jerusalem. But today we're focusing on James, son of Zebedee, who was also part of Jesus' inner circle along with Peter and his own brother, John. So let's learn from the life of James and uncover what does it truly mean to be wholehearted in our pursuit of Jesus. Let's start right at the beginning. The first thing that we learn is that James was very quick to respond to Jesus. When he first met James by the Sea of Galilee, uh, he was mending his nets with his father and his brother John. And when Jesus calls him, J James doesn't hesitate. He and his brother John, they leave their nets and, they, and their father and they follow Jesus in Mark 1:19. It says when uh, he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and they were preparing the nets. Um, but without delay, he called them and they left their father in the boat with the hired men and they followed him. Now, this is not a small thing. Let's not underestimate the significance of this moment. James was responsive to the call, despite not knowing fully what lay ahead. He wasn't just leaving his job. This potentially was his livelihood, his family, everything familiar to him. He doesn't seem to have took too much time to think, think things over. He made an immediate decision. He knew this was the right way to go, and he knew that this was a life-changing moment. He kept it simple. He trusted Jesus, he responded, and he went for it. And his instantaneous decision to follow after Jesus and his urgency of responding to God's call um, is a great example to us and how we should also respond. Now, James teaches us that God's calling on our life can be disruptive, it's immediate, and it warrants our full attention and our action. His immediate yes is a powerful example that we need to be responsive in our spirit to the words of Jesus. And when we respond, life is never the same again. His example raises some big questions for us. Are we willing to make the change in our lives, to leave our comfort zones? Are we willing to simply trust, follow, and have faith? So next we see that James became a powerful witness for Jesus. James was not a background character. He witnessed significant events in the ministry of Jesus. He was, as I said, in the inner circle. He, Peter, and his brother John uh, were the ones that Jesus permitted to go with him to see Jairus' daughter raised from the dead. This same group witnessed Jesus' glory on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was among four disciples who questioned Jesus privately on the Mount of Olives, and he was included again with John and Peter when the Lord urged those three to pray with him privately in the Garden of Gethsemane. So as a member of that small group, he was privileged to witness Jesus' power in raising of the dead. He saw his glory when he was transfigured. He saw Christ's sovereignty um, in the way that the Lord unfolded the future to them, and he saw the Saviour's agony in the Garden as he prepared for the cross. Now, being a Christian is about having a personal encounter. It's not about religion, it's not about what you know, but it's that experience of Christ's transforming power that shapes and guides our lives. Now, going all in for Jesus means being a powerful witness for Jesus, just like the disciple James. 
The Bible makes this clear in Acts 1.8. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Now, James was also known for being a person of zeal. James was passionate about Jesus. He was filled with zeal for Jesus that sometimes, though, his passion needed shaping. His zeal was such that James and his brother even earned themselves a nickname from Jesus called the Sons of Thunder. Perhaps, unlike Peter's name change that was intended to shape their character and mark their life, this nickname was a nod to their passionate temperaments whilst offering a humorous and gentle correction. On one notable occasion in Luke chapter 9, he wanted to call down fire on a whole village for refusing because they refused Jesus a place to stay. Now, scripture reports that they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned to them and rebukes them, and they basically just went and found another place to stay. Now, his passion needed refinement, but it was there, and at root, it was a passion for Christ. This is a powerful example to us, and the life of the believer is meant to be a life of love, of passion, and a fire that burns in our spirit and soul. And we can learn so much from James. Jesus says that we are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And also this, to love your neighbour as yourself, and that there's no greater commandment than these. Paul says in Romans 12, 11, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual further serving the Lord. Now these verses show the kind of love and passion we're called to have for living for God and for loving people. They show us the kind of spirit and experience we should have when we're building our relationship with Jesus and following after him. Next, we see that James had to humbly learn what it meant to follow Jesus. This meant dealing with his pride and selfish ambition, which so often we all have, and he once famously sought to, to have the greatest seat of honour in Jesus' kingdom in the future in heaven, along with his brother John, much to the annoyance of the other disciples. In fact, they were still arguing about this all the way up to the Last Supper. In Mark chapter 10, we read that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Let one of us sit on your right and the other on your left in glory. And in verse 43, Jesus has to explain to them, Whoever wants to become great amongst you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be the slave to all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. Now Jesus led James on a journey to see that true greatness is found in service and serving one another. And if James wanted to truly follow Jesus, he was going to have to be willing to lay his life down for others. So going all in for Jesus is not about our glory. It's about becoming more like him. It's about serving. It's about sacrifice, which brings us to the next point. James ultimately gave his life for Jesus. The only time James is mentioned by himself outside of that core group is in the book of Acts, where his martyrdom is recorded. He had the distinction of being the first apostle that gave his life for Jesus. He was all in to the point of giving his life for the sake of the gospel. In Acts 12.1, we read that King Herod arrested some that belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. And he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. James ultimately didn't just talk the talk, he walked the walk, even to the point of death. And his martyrdom stands as a testament to his unswerving faith and his devotion. He was all in. He was fully committed and he didn't hold anything back from the Lord. For most of us, our devotion to Christ may be tested in such, uh, might not be tested in such a manner. Yet James's life challenges us to consider what are we willing to give up? How far are we willing to go? It may not be with our physical lives, but it might be dying to our desires, our ambitions, our comfort zones for the sake of our calling. Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 2, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So none of us will live forever, but we need to decide how we live. That is what matters. Today, we too can follow in James's example and truly give our whole lives to Jesus. Let me conclude with a story about another James, a modern day missionary in Marta, who also gave his life for Jesus and for others at the young age of 28. Better known as Jim Elliot, he was not well known during his life. He grew up in Portland, Oregon, in his local church and attended Wheaton College before following God's call to reach the people of Ecuador. The thing he is most well known for in his life is the incredible passion he had for those who hadn't come to know Christ. And he wrote this one day in his devotional. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. And like Jim Elliot, and like the Apostle James, let us give everything so that we may gain everything that the Lord has for us. Today, be quick to respond to Jesus. Follow after him. Listen to his words. You'll become a powerful witness for 
what he does in your life. Be passionate about him. Humbly learn what it means to let him shape your character. We need to give everything for Jesus. And when we do, we will witness the amazing things he will do in shaping us and guiding us in every season. Let's pray. Maybe if you've never decided to follow Jesus um, and you're hearing about James's example and the adventure of life that he went on and the fullness of life that he experienced, maybe today you'd like to pray and respond to these words and respond to the words of Jesus and follow after him. So we're gonna pray. And then we're gonna pray, if you are a Christian, um, that we'll follow after Jesus wholeheartedly, that we won't do things in half measures, that we won't stay in our comfort zones, we won't be lukewarm, but we will press into everything that God has for us. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that just like James in the Bible, you come after us. And you say those words today, come follow me. Now Lord, we wanna make that decision to follow you, uh, to confess our sins, to not just be stuck in our old ways of living and thinking and doing things our way, Lord, but we want to follow after you. Lord, would you take us on that adventure? Would you fill us by your Holy Spirit and guide us every step along the way? Would you work on our character? Would you turn our tests into a testimony so that we too can bear powerful witness of what you want to do in our lives? And Lord, our prayer is that we would follow you with real passion. We would worship in the words of Paul that we would live as living sacrifices, that we wouldn't conform to the pattern of this world, that we wouldn't be distracted by the pressures of life, that we wouldn't live by fear, that we would live by faith. We would keep things simple like James and respond quickly and follow and trust and live by faith. In your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. King's Church International is a multi-generational, multi-racial church with over 50 nationalities represented and it began with just five people in Slough during World War II. Today our congregations meet on Sundays in Windsor UK, Westminster London and in Robertson South Africa. But throughout the week we meet in many different areas in smaller groups known as life groups which are the heart of the life of the church. We have age-specific programmes for children and youth. And we also sponsor a Christian school in Windsor, which started in 2012, as well as supporting several schools in West Africa. Our focus as a church is on sharing the good news of Jesus, locally and globally, and developing committed disciples of Jesus and forming them as leaders. We follow a process known as the G12 vision, following the example of Jesus in training 12 disciples. The G12 vision, which was pioneered in one of the world's largest churches in Bogota, Colombia, is very similar to the approach of 18th century evangelist John Wesley, which brought lasting personal and social transformation in the UK and throughout the world. If you want to find out more about our ministry or get connected with us, please go to kcionline.org forward slash connect. God bless you.